Oh, that, oh, there you go. That, that's not too bad. <clears throat> they say, thank you to Mattel for sending me, slash us, this product as a gift to review. That's not too bad, is it? Okay, you get behind that camera. You control it. I'm needs already to be, here. If it needs to be any closer to it. I dig stuff out of the rubbish. <laughs> Did I? What to do? You put a newspaper in the bin instead of in recycling. I'm switching off the light bulb. Okay. <laughs> Hello and welcome to today's video where I need to disclose that Mattel sent me this really amazing toy. Mattel sent me this awesome product to review. I don't need to be higher. It's that good. It's not good. Uh, a couple of things I just wanted to talk about before we get into today's video. Uh, first off, you may notice this amazing uh, hoodie. Uh, it isn't released yet, but this is official Toast merchandise, as you can see there. Are you zooming in with me? La 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 la. La la la. Can you zoom into it? I'm working with a company at the moment, Carnotaurus and the Toast or logo there. We've also got some, oh no, it's, it's, it's there as well. You've got a little toast there. Well, I say a little one, it's actually bigger. Japanese kanji, because that's all of what the cool kids have these days. And since I'm trying to learn, we can learn Japanese. Okay, you ready? Zoom in this one, Whitney. So that you got to, and then the line means that you just extend it. So to, and then a tsu, to. Hey! Because actually I don't think Japanese have a word for toast. So that made the translation easy. So keep an eye out for these hoodies when they drop. Uh, there's also a secret toast, which you'll have to find. Yeah, it's hidden. You won't be able to find I'm not going to tell you where it is. I'm not going to disclose the secrets. Also, uh, second thing I wanted to bring up before. I know, I know, we'll get to it eventually. Don't worry. Uh, Sweet Fox Wings, who did the amazing uh, Hypo Spino from one of the previous videos and even gifted me a Hypo Toast for the box messing up which was completely not her fault uh, I just want to say a really big heartfelt thank you to you guys because um, you went over to her channel, subscribed, showed her loads of support it was amazing, it really made a, a big difference uh, to her and her work so I can't, I can't thank you guys enough, you're awesome. You helped somebody out there who poured, who pours all of their love into their creations and stuff. And really, when people are doing that, there's nothing better than to be like, hey, actually, the stuff you're doing is amazing. Is my hair okay? Wait, it's fine. <gasps> my hair was not okay. Mm. Do my hair, please. <laughs> Just whack it. <laughs> Just, come here, come here. Bam! So! And now, uh, <clears throat> we'll, we'll do that one again, Winnie. I wasn't very good. We have got something really special, and I'm actually really excited uh, to sort of show it to you guys. And I see it in person. Mattel messaged me not too long ago. Hey, we're gonna send you this thing, and I didn't even respond to the email. And then all of a sudden, I've got like, oh, you've got a parcel waiting for you at the drop off. That was very nice of Mattel to send it even though I actually didn't even respond. Because this thing is the hot commodity right now. The rare thing to get, this is the Spinosaurus, if you remember that thing, that was hard to find. Uh, and actually, tell you what, I'm gonna get it straight out of the box. I'm not gonna, because I can see it now, but I want to sort of present it to you. Yeah, I got it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I did it. The beautiful. Legacy Brachiosaurus from Jurassic Park. Why is this so special? Well, I mean, just take a look at it for a start. The, the, the this box art, I can't get over it. We haven't had this in so long to have a beautiful illustration showing um, like an iconic scene from the movie where actually, well, it's kind of a mixture of both. It's, it's the, when they see the Brachiosaurus and then they see the, the sprawling landscape that shows uh, the other Brachiosaurs and the Parasaurolophus there. And you got Alan Grant, uh, Ellie Sadler, and uh, John Hammond. And here, even in this bit, you've got <laughs> how big this thing is. This is special because this box art only exists because of the fans. Not just me, but you guys who... Here's a good example. This, even though I haven't actually covered it at all on the channel, is 
the Jurassic Park original board game. And they didn't go with a picture from the movie. No, they hired an artist to recreate the scene where the T-Rex breaks out and it looks so freaking good. You know, we voiced our, our, you know, our grievances in the past with box art, especially with Jurassic World. Uh, they took a picture of the toy, photoshopped it a little bit, and that was it. Whereas the old ones, we got stuff like this, stuff that looked like art on its own. I mean, that could be a poster, of course, you would want to get rid of all that, but it just looks amazing. And because of our feedback, we have just this amazing um, tribute, I guess, in a way. Not only is it, uh, hold on, I put this away. Only does it look absolutely amazing, but it is of a species of dinosaur uh, that we have only seen, if I remember right, two times. The first time was in Jurassic Park, uh, the original where we had a baby um, Brachiosaur that I think came with Tim. But we find the image, ta -da! I'll put it there. Uh, and the second Brachiosaur we had was in the Jurassic Park 3 series uh, with the React attacks. And it was probably about that big. It, it was the same size as the T-Rex and the Spinosaur. Whereas this one, I think I could be wrong, but it is made to scale with all the other action uh, figures that you get. So we'll have a, a little look at the back as well. In fact, the back is, uh, the back looks interesting. Um, it would have been cool to have had, you know, um, I guess you've got the kid playing with the toy there, but it would have been nice to have, <laughs> now, now I'm asking too much, to have a diorama of the Abraxos. But it, I mean, this is probably how maybe they show it on the shelf. You've got two options. Uh, it's striking in its own, it is 71 centimeters um, and then 28, so that's 28 inches. So this thing is massive. It's bigger, taller. It's, I think it's the tallest toy dinosaur from Jurassic Park franchise, I should say, that we've ever had. Um, topping the Colossal T-Rex and the Colossal Blue, which I don't think was bigger. Um, but as far as mass goes, I don't think it's the biggest. But how about we don't spend any more time yabbering on? Because you've listened to you, you've listened to me for years. I can shut up. Uh, let's get this thing out of the box. You go in the toilet? Oh, Whitney, we just a the bottom. Oh god, that's very. That's an odd sight. <laughs> Pull you out by your neck, stuff. Do you like it? His, he his head's a little bit small. Right. Okay. Well, here are the other bits. Oh, that is gorgeous. There's a mouth. Oh, the mouth opens as well. You could have that as a mount, couldn't you? You could just have that. That would look weird. Would that look weird? It does not look like a giant worm. <laughs> That's dirty, Whitney. E. It is low density polyethylene terapathylate. High density is what they use in plastic bottles. So maybe <laughs> it's the only bit of graphic design I remember. All the different types of plastic. All right, so here you go. You've got the tail and you've got the eed. So, I guess it goes on. I don't think once you attach these that you can unattach them. Or can you? You're gonna break it. You're gonna break it. Yeah, no, there's no way you're getting that off. Interesting thing is, once you've made it, it's, um, you're not getting it apart again. Wow, okay. It's just like as tall as me from the table. Oh my God. I think this is actually to scale. Wait. To scale of the figures, Whitney. No, not really a brachiosaur. <laughs> okay, oh God. Weird, that's really weird. I mean, that, that we're, I guess we're seeing a problem already, aren't we? Okay, so let's, let's address the elephant in the room or the brachiosaurus in the room that I should say. <laughs> is that this thing is ginormous. Let's start on the positives first. Let's have a just general review. As far as a Brachiosaur model goes, it looks gorgeous. It, its size is massive. And of course, that's what Brachiosaur has had going for it. And it really sells that um, when Alan Grant first saw it and Ellie Sattler saw it. Um, and she's like, wow, this is so big. And you, you really do get a sense of scale. As a kid, I would have killed for this thing. This is so cool. So you can open and close the mouth. Point of articulation, I'll give it that. It is a huge bit of plastic. There's no denying that. And as far as space goes, I can only see this thing existing in a collector's area. And I mean, even collectors, you've got shelves. You don't have shelves that wide. Uh, or a children's playroom, like, or area, or bedroom. It would just be, 
stuck in the corner. But as far as legs go, they um, they have Hello. Uh, two, I think, click-in points, which is one at the bottom and one at the top, so that's quite nice, so they can keep steady. So you're not gonna have this massive thing toppling over and crushing your toddler. Wow, they move all the way backwards, would you look at that? Also, you can, they've got the scan code. Scan the code, Whitney, focus on the code. He's also got a number on his butt. I don't know why you would want a Brachys, maybe it's dead and the T-Rex is like pulling its leg. Well, that would be definitely dislocated if it's around there, so. And the other biggest point of articulation really is the neck. He goes from teetotal to wasted within two seconds. It looks incredibly unsightly. <laughs> Obviously, this is supposed to be like, oh, yay, he's having a drink of water. Nom, 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 nom. That is probably the best you're going to get away with, with it looking all right. Think about that much before he becomes Hunchback of Jurassic Park. Also, they've painted on the bits of plastic that wouldn't normally be seen in its neutral position, as well as on the underneath, so that's quite nice. Looking at that already, if you zoom in on that, Whitney, ah, damn, I really wish I'd caught that when I got it out of the box if that was already scratched or not but you can see here down the side it looks like the paint is chipping already with just me moving it up and down a couple of times it's going to be the bottom part here or the top neck part uh, another thing is got kids um, with tiny little fingers and you're moving this big neck joint I mean I'm not doing it that hard there and I can feel my skin sort of going into the uh, the neck crease. I mean if a kid just goes whoop they, they've caught their finger and oh, I, I don't want to know actually that could probably be that's a, a negative to the Brachiosaurus. Uh, tail um, doesn't really have much articulation not that the Brachiosaurus would really have much articulation in its tail. Um, uh, when this model actually really shines and looks particularly like the Stan Winston maquette is actually in the head. Inside the mouth they've went to the effort of making a separate mold for the tongue and to make it glossy and pink that most of the dinosaurs have. Uh, you've got teeth as well which have been painted individually or at least you know over the top with the top ones. The, lo the lower jaw, the teeth are the same colour as the jaw so that's quite easy but with the top one They've definitely painted just the teeth and not actually splashed too much on the uh, head. There is actually a little bit of overspray on this side. Maybe I'll show it in a close-up. The head details and that mold is just really, really spectacular. I don't know if it looks too much like the one from Fallen Kingdom. Not that I had too much of a good look at it, but I feel like I've I've seen that shot. I've I've a hundred percent seen um, the, that Brachiosaurus before. Now, let's have a comparison against other dinosaurs. Jurassic Park Dilophosaurus. The, the, one of the best toys that would squ uh, squirt out water. Um, that actually looks very to scale. How about we go for a Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom Dilophosaurus? Again, that works, and you can even stomp on it if you want to. I guess that's what a lot of kids are gonna do, aren't they? They're gonna just the Triceratops from the Jurassic Park original franchise. Yeah, that looks about right. I feel like I've never worked with a toy so big and jumping all around. How about the T-Rex from the original Kenner line? How does that one stack up? We'll move the Triceratops ahead. Yeah, yeah, that looks really good. That's awesome. Bigger, the Bull T-Rex from the uh, the Lost World line. Uh, actually, well, I say bigger, he's kind of tilting downwards. You could get a T-Rex and just, you could do perform an amazing jump and bite the neck. Stegosaurus, stomp and strike T-Rex, Conotaurus. <laughs> as far as height goes, you could have probably three of these T-Rexes, the stomp and strike, standing on top of each other before you you get about close to the height. Pr a Brachiosaurus like this, isn't just for Christmas. You're gonna have this for a long time. So, <laughs> parents, definitely think about where this is gonna go once your kid decides to not play with it anymore or um, or a collector. How big are your shelves? I mean, I'm quite lucky. I've got this big space here. I could, actually that looks really good. <laughs> it doesn't look too bad at all. In closing, I think this Brachiosaurus for what it is, it's an amazing toy. Um, I wouldn't even call it a toy, it's more like a statue. It's 
It's what everyone wants out of a Brachiosaurus. It's big, it's a spectacle, it takes up space and it leaves an impact. Any kid who's playing with uh, any scenario, you know, when they see this thing, it could be an amazing thing for, you know, the, the military to take on or to transport or for some sort of dinosaur fight. Because of that, unfortunately, we're left with the problem of it's a little bit too big. And the fact that we can't really take leg off is something that Mattel probably could have thought of. Some sort of detach button would be nice. And even then, you could have it got ripped apart by other dinosaurs. Bah, the neck's gone. <laughs> uh, you've got another, you've got a rubber tail there. That's quite interesting. You've got a rubber part of the tail. It is the same plastic as what they've used in previous. Kids play rough, they throw. I don't know how long that's gonna last, especially with something this big. It, uh, it's not actually too heavy in comparison, really, uh, for its size. And also it's fairly expensive for what it is, which really is just a glorified giant bit of plastic. <laughs> it looks amazing. It's a love letter to the fans. The box itself is beautiful. The sculpt is amazing. The paint job doesn't need to be too complicated. It looks great. And yeah, I'm gonna leave it here. Uh, but if you enjoyed this video, leave a like. And until next time, I'll see you later. Oh, bye bye.